हेलो गुड इवनिंग ऑल गुड इवनिंग मैम क्या सो न्यू फ्यूअर देयर के टोटल आर 16 पीपल सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट आई वांट टू नो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हैव वॉच्ड वीक टू You can raise your hands. Uh, I could say one, two. Only two people have watched. One by two videos watched only. Okay. So, oh, Shalendra and Saurav, have you watched uh, the complete? Videos? Yes, ma'am. Complete, oh. complete, ma'am. Oh, nice, yes, nice. That's nice. सिर्फ वीडियोस वॉश्ड ओके ऑल राइट सो व्हाट डू यू वांट टू डू टुडे एज ए आई कुड से नॉट मेनी स्टूडेंट्स हैव वॉश्ड लाइक फाइव सिक्स स्टूडेंट्स हैव वॉच समथिंग सॉरी basically activity week two was little bit harder than as compared to the week one so can yeah we... it's a little bit harder that's right so what we want that can we have open session first then after we can have activity question session okay so we want today uh, like uh, top like uh, topic clarity. discussion topic discussion and uh, clarity on the topics being covered in week two Okay. Let me share my screen. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And second doubt is, can we shift this class to some early, just because the winter are just on the way? Ah, uh, yeah, I understand. But uh, but time we wanted even we wanted it early but no no ma'am it was this, too much clashing. It is a perfect time, ma'am. Please don't uh, shift it. Ah uh, no no we are not going to shift it. But uh, the saying, uh, it may not be perfect for time for everybody. Uh, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah and if the people are in north, or oh, definitely winter is going to come and it's going to be cold. You know. Yes ma'am. Yeah. yeah. um yeah so we cannot move it now uh, like there are no free or uh, time slots available yeah the only otherwise there will be clash in the session so the only thing is that. the class last for may basically 10 o'clock is after 10 it means it may last for 3 hours or 3 and a half hours so no this session this session we would like to keep it for 2 hours because it's uh, like anyways 8 to 10 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You are you all are able to see the screen? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. so in week 2 
the topics that we are going to see is so uh, the first is independence then the second we have so first we'll look at it for like two random variables and the same thing uh, will follow for multiple random variables okay then we have uh, derived a condition uh, derived uh, derived a relation for iid geometric next we have Uh, next we have memory list property uh then we are going to talk about functions of random variable so in functions of random variable we are going to look at uh, like three things so one is sum of two sum of two random variables then maximum of two random variables and then minimum of two random variables okay so these are the topics that are there in basically week 2 all right so from this topic i want to know what all you have seen or uh, did you see the independence now up to memorialize well, property of geometric i have some doubt in function okay, that is so, uh, is that it is okay? up to fourth lecture okay is it okay if i start directly from functions of random variable from the beginning we start from memory list memory list property also okay uh, iid geometric is clear to everyone yes ma'am correct i think oh. we should go independence is clear independence is clear yeah okay yes i will i will start from then memory list geometric so uh, there is ma one ma from ma iid geometry okay okay let's say let's say i assume that you all knows how to check for independence yes. so to check for independence you know that uh, you should have if it is two random variable it should Ma be next, next all session will be in the google meet yeah, or zoom it, it will be in google meet okay but it is written in the calendar that in the zoom and i am waiting in the zoom Oh, in the calendar it is Zoom, is it? Uh, I think no, it's Google, Google Meet. Google Meet, no? Initially, yes, initially it was uh, Zoom, but later it has been changed to Google Meet. Yes, ma'am. Now it changed. Into now Google. it is changed to. Yes, I enjoyed that. Yeah, ma'am. Ma'am, ma one uh, hello. Yeah, yeah. Please tell. Ma'am, one query is that. Uh, Uh -huh. uh, we have given practice book in the supplementary uh, for week zero. It is given, yes. Yeah, okay, ma'am. For that, that is not available for week two or week three. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, for week one to three, it is still pre under preparation. But uh, once week four start, we will give you for week four, five, six. Ma'am, YouTube oh. link is not working, ma'am. YouTube link is not working. No, ma'am. Okay, just uh, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, just... it's writing video unavailable. Video has been removed. Ah, uh, just give me a minute then. Wait. Ah, uh, yes, just give me a minute. Ah, uh, just hold on for like two three minutes. I will. And practice book will be very helpful. Actually, that is required. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I understand. We are working on it currently. So okay, one two three no. not this time, but four five no. six. If we get before the assignments, ma'am, that will be very helpful. Otherwise, uh, we are facing difficulty in solving the questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ma'am, in a week yeah, there is a 
Give me a minute. Uh, just give me a minute. I will just check the YouTube link is not working, right? Let me just give me a minute. I will just come back in two minutes. Okay. Hello. What we want before the exam? Practice book. Somebody was asking. Hello. Hello. Somebody was asking what we want before the exam. Supplementary. आप सब लोग का जो है वीक वन का एक्स्ट्रा एक्टिविटी क्लियर हो गया है हाँ हाँ अच्छा एक्स्ट्रा एक्टिविटी थर्ड पूछ रहे सही एक्स्ट्रा एक्टिविटी एवरीबॉडी हैज गिवन रिव्यू फॉर अदर्स आल्सो नो आई हैव वी हैव वी हैव वी हैव स्टार्टेड गिविंग द रिव्यू हाँ बेटर एंड समबडी वाज सजेस्टिंग यू शुड गिव मोर देन थ्री पीपल so that if somebody has not done yes i i have given 10 10 reviews <laughs> yeah even i have done <laughs> but i have got only one review for myself so, so is there any even for me i to got only one people review people should be more active 60 yeah, people are here for... i request everybody to give review how do we review i don't know Ah, Divya. Go to portal. Yeah. yeah. No, don't go to portal. You go that your, uh, your extra activity is there, na? Okay. Yes, yes. There only it will it, it will guide you how to go. You just no, click no, there. You see, will also it, get review and uh, you 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 will give review also. Okay. There will be a link. Copy that link. Yeah, I request Anim Animesh ji. I request you do at least uh, more than three, five, six, ten maximum is there. So you uh, should do. Okay. Yeah, yes. All right. Uh, so I have informed the team to update the YouTube link. Uh, we'll start the uh, our session now. Okay. It will get updated in a while. Ma'am, some people are asking how to do review for the extra. Yes, ma'am. So uh, already a template has been, a rubric has been provided to you, and you check the rubric and see if uh, all the details that are given is uh, has been done by the student. That's the way you are going to review. So you don't have to give marks or some something. You just go to rubric and see. Uh, you will have markdown option and. You just uh... yeah yeah that is there but some uh, where they should find and all that you can just do that. Uh, where uh, where to find what? Ma'am, what if for the review? Okay, wait. Uh... Ma'am, one more query I have. If somebody does not give you review, uh, yeah. then is it any problem? Uh, see, all right. Uh, any queries related to extra activity? Uh, uh, so what you ask just is if somebody doesn't give you review, review. Then, uh -huh. yeah, then it it's uh, from our side. Then we will give you the review, uh -huh. and according to that, marks will be calculated. So do not worry about all that. So you finish okay. your extra activity part. uh you finish it you review it you will be allotted some people randomly or uh, you can review it and then that's enough and for reviewing is there any deadline that uh, to when we can review yeah for time? review also there is a deadline it is all it must be there on the portal no it's, it's not 21. mentioned it's 21 it's 21 yeah it okay, is okay. there it is there okay 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 thank you thank you yeah all right so i assume you all know uh, how to check independence so if you have two random variable you just have to see if fx y is equal to fx times f y of y okay so if you have any table uh, kind uh, like if you have any join distribution and to check independence you will have to check for every pair of x and y if this holds and if you have to check but to check independence it should be for every pair of values but if it is non independent if let's say you find even a p 
pair of x y for which it is non independent for which this property does not hold then you can say that it is not independent okay i hope till independence all of you have watched and it is also not so difficult so it should be clear to all of you all right uh we'll start from uh, iid geometric okay so here let's say you have random variable x1 x2 up to xn that is iid geometric p okay and so what do we mean by geometric p it means all these random variable x1 x2 up to xn are uh, so do you all understand what is mean by iid independent oh, and identical and identical identical distribution okay okay uh, can you give me a minute uh, uh, okay can you check if uh, youtube link is working right now no ma'am it's still not working okay uh, sorry about that so uh, it is still not working right it will get sorted out in some time right so all right where were you we were at iid so what do you understand by iid iid identically distributed yeah so it, it means it is yes. independent and identically distributed so what do you understand by independent and identically distributed and if the margin and pm of are identical and they are independent also yeah so basically yeah that is right so basically if i am writing x1 x2 up to xn iid geometric so it means that this all these random variable x1 x2 up to xn they are independent and they have identical distribution as geometric p so even x1 has geometric p distribution x2 has geometric p distribution x3 has geometric p distribution and so on okay so basically all these random variables are independent and they have geometric p distribution now what we are and okay so once you know that all these random variables follow geometric p distribution can you tell me what is the range of geometric p 1 to infinity 1 to infinity this is fine okay 1 2 3 up to infinity this is the range now if i have to write what is the probability that x equal k so x here i am saying x is geometric p distribution so what is the probability 1 minus p to the power k minus 1 into p. 1 minus p to the power k minus 1 into p. So this is clear to everybody, right? How did we get this? It is clear to everyone. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now let's move ahead. So what we have to find is, we have to find what is the probability that x1 greater than for some j, okay, for some j. 
x1 greater than j x2 greater than j up to xn greater than j okay uh so saying that if like x1 greater than j x2 greater than j up to xn greater than j and you know that all these xis are independent okay so we know that if X, this is basically or what join uh, join uh, pms yes right and if we are saying that all these xis are independent it means i can write this as probability x1 greater than j probability x2 greater than j up to probability x in greater than j all right since now also this all these xis are geometric p okay since all these xis are geometric p so can i write this as probability x greater than j to the power n yes it is clear yes all right so basically now i want to find what is probability this last step is not clear okay. this step last clear. step is not clear okay so it is probability x1 greater than j x2 greater than j up to probability x n greater than j all is in multiplication okay now you know that all these xis are geometric p okay so what does it mean it means even x1 follows geometric p distribution x2 follows geometric p distribution up to xn follows geometric p distribution so all this x1 x2 up to xn i can write it as let's say sum x i can write because everything is same yeah yeah right so this is a common x that i have written that x is geometric p so since this is total n you are multiplying it n time so it should be 2 to the uh, to the power n probability to the power n Right. Oh, I'm a little confused over here. These x's, x i, x one, x two, are different or random variables. No, can you can you explain with some example these, uh, for this part only? Because lots are of variables. Are these are different confusing. random variables? See, yeah, these are different. See, x one like is a example, random variable. Like for example, you could have said x y z, right? So, yeah, yeah. What we are saying is x one, x two, x three, up to x n. they are all geometric we are saying they are geometric distribution so saying that what it means is x1 is follows geometric p distribution even x2 follows geometric p distribution so on till xn also follows geometric p distribution okay so since you can see that all these random variables x1 x2 up to xn they follow a geometric p distribution what does it mean so i can write simply as that x follow geometric p i can let's say i am writing all this x1 equal x2 up to equal xn to be some x some random variable x i can write it right no uh, yes ma'am ma like but you write na uh, ki x1 greater than j x2 greater than j what does exactly that represent greater than j no uh, we are trying to find uh what this probability is going to be basically is, is this joint probability the first line uh, yes that would be joint probability this is joint yes. probability like if you have uh, like here it was like if you have n iid geometric p distribution then uh what is going to be your this joint probability that x1 greater than j x2 greater than j up to xn greater than j this is what we want so these are all it's just a product of the probabilities yeah because they were all independent right oh yes i am yeah, they were all independent so i can write this as product okay. this is what independence says like if you have uh, let's say you want to uh you want to say that my n random variables are independent i can write it as a uh, mar product of marginal basically right ma'am can you please go to the previous slide for once yeah yeah uh, a geometric distribution is the one where we see how many uh, in how many trials we get our first success am i right yeah yes right This is all Having you have got. Greater than j means that uh, hmm. uh, we would not get it in the first 
j minus one trial will i mean the success will come in far more than that right yeah success will not come till j trial basically yeah so we are right this x is basically i am saying that since all are iit geometrically i can denote this all these random variable x1 x2 up to xn as x right Ma'am, right. because they are identical. That's they are right. identical. Yeah. Can you please mute everybody for once? Yeah. All right. So, since all the x i's were identical, I could write this probability x one greater than j into probability x two greater than j up to probability x n greater than j to be probability x greater than j two to the power or uh, to the power n. Okay. Now we'll move further. So, what is what exactly is this probability x greater than j is? So now we have to find what is the probability that x greater than j. Okay, so this can be written as probability that x is equal to j plus one. Yeah, so this this can be written as that probability your x is greater than equal to j plus one. Okay, and this is basically nothing but your so x greater than j plus one. So this is going to be one minus p to the power k minus one into p, where k varying from j plus one to infinity. This is fine. Yes. Yes. It's fine. No. Yeah. Now just write the terms uh, separately. So when k equal j plus one, the first term will the first term will become One minus p to the power j into p. Second term will become one minus p to the power j plus one into p. Up to so on, right? It will go on till infinity. Hmm. So you can see that from here you can take this one minus p to the power j into p as a constant. Now it will remain one plus. One minus p. Ah, please mute. Oh, oh, one hi to de do. Ah, please mute. Oh, Shivani. Oh, sorry, sorry. If you are not speaking, please keep yourself muted. Okay. Okay. So this become one plus one minus p plus one minus p whole square, and so on. Right. Hmm. Now. You can see that this follows a geometric distribution. Uh, sorry, geometric. Uh, oh, well, series. Geometric oh, series. Oh, geometric oh, series. Right. So, what is the first term here? One. 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 And what is the common ratio? It's one minus. One minus p. One minus p. Okay. So, what is the what is the sum? sum. A by one. A by one minus one by one minus p. So one by one minus one minus p. One minus p. So basically one by p. Okay. And then you solve it, you will get one minus one minus p to the power j into p into one minus. Into one by p. So it will get cancelled out, and you you got probability x greater than j equal. One minus p, p to, to the, the power, power j. j. Okay. Now, what is that we were interested in? We were interested in finding this joint probability. Okay, and yeah. this turned out to be equal to probability x greater than j to the power n. Okay, and what we found is probability x greater than j is one minus p to the power z, uh, j. Right. So, what is probability x greater than j? To the power n, this is going to be one minus p to the power j, j n, n. Yeah. right? 
So this is the result we got. So why we have derived this property? Because it is going to be useful in later uh, problems. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, uh, actually, a very basic know. doubt. Ah, okay. I just wanted to ask. We have so many uh, random variables, right? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, they all random variables are associated with a single experiment, no? Um, okay, what do you mean by associated with single experiment? Means I have conducted an experiment and an experiment has been conducted mm -hmm. and only related to that we are defining all these variables. It's not like this one experiment yeah, yeah, yeah. for that we have done. No, 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 no. So, uh, like uh, in case of like geometric distribution. So, in geometric distribution, uh, what does it model? It basically models uh, the number of tries needed to get the first success, right? So you have performed some experiment, and experiment here looks like something where you are interested in getting the first success, and where uh, all of your trials are going to be independent, and each of the trials are Bernoulli. The, and that when you are interested in finding now, we have so yeah. many random variables. So so many geometric trials are happening. Uh, okay, you, are you talking about this question? Yeah. Uh, I'm can you go to the previous about... slide? Yes. Yeah. I'm here so it is IID. Here. Huh? Yeah, here all the X1, X2, uh, the probability is following the IID, right? Huh. Here we are saying that all these random variables follow the same distribution. Yes. That so... is geometric P. Even the parameter P is not changing, it's same P. For all these exercises, so the basically the defines basically more we than can one say that variable, uh, uh, why, why is distribution. it not possible? No, I uh, am not saying it's mm -hmm. not possible. I, can you give some example of it, ma'am? Is there any okay. so, huh? ma'am? Is there any experimental similarity between geometric distribution and geometric series? Okay, so that's why yeah, the word geometric. Yeah, that's why you got the word geometric. Basically, uh, if uh, it follows the geometric series, if you get the sum, like here you got the sum like this, right? Yes, ma'am. Once you solved it, you got a geometric series. So, yes, ma'am. Uh, if a random variable is has geometric distribution, it will have a geometric series, basically. Basically, it resembles like. Geometric series. It resembles That's like a uh, geometric series. Ma'am, you just uh, ma'am, you say... just gave a, gave an example that we are doing an experiment and until unless uh, the first experiment comes out to be true, that is an the example of geometric yeah. series. So, yeah. is, so what if what is the relation? Is I'm, I'm not I'm not being able to relate it because it is just a series uh, having a common difference of you know in a fraction terms, and on the other hand, that the first uh, uh, outcome which is coming out. Be true. I'm not able, being able to relate both of them. Okay. Uh, see. Um, let's take an example. Uh, let's say uh, there is a production line, and or let uh, okay, so, and some I items are being manufactured from a machine, and your interest, you are going to pick some items until you get the first effective. Okay. So you know that this is going to somehow model the uh, geometric distribution. So, ma'am, can you uh, tell me that uh, what if if this um, uh, series is not following IID, then what then, will happen? Then we cannot uh, write. Then we cannot write x greater than j uh, to the power n here. Then, yeah, then, write. then, then it will be. Then, then then you will have to do individual calculation here. Like whatever your x one is, whatever your x two is, whatever your x n is, you will ha on the basis of this parameter p, you will have your probabilities will vary. Ma'am, why we are calling that particular situation okay. to be, uh, ma'am, geometric distribution, where the first uh, experiment sometimes comes out to be true? Uh, sorry, where the first experiment sometimes comes out to be true. Not not first experiment. Not first experiment. Uh, we are conducting an experiment, and mm -hmm. eventually our uh, area of interest comes out to be true. Mm -hmm. 
the example we were just giving okay so, uh, so why like, we call it geometric it just, it just a name given to it right i mean just like bernoulli poisson binomial negative binomial so and the relation okay. what is the relation between two uh, geometric series and geometric distribution if you have a geometric distribution it follows the like if you sum like what like let's say if you have a random variable x that follows a geometric distribution then like probability that uh, your success, first success will come on the first trial plus a probability that your first success will come on the second trial plus probability that first success comes on the third trial and so on if you try to find it you will see that it will come out to be a geometric series yes right? man the probability will be the geometric like, series yeah like uh, if i am saying x is a geometric p distribution okay and yes, you know that probability that x equal k x equal k means what that your first success is on the kth trial so this you can write it as 1 minus p k minus 1 into p it means on the first k minus 1 trial you got a failure and on the kth trial you got a success, success. right and you knew that if it is a geometric all the trials are bernoulli all are independent and that's why we are able to write it like, we are Multiply. able to write it like this yes, now ma'am. if i have to write probability x equal 1 plus probability x equal 2 okay plus probability x equal 3 and so on so you will see that it follows a geometric series right so 1 minus p 1 minus 1 0 it's going to be 1 so it is just p so this is just p then this will come out to be 1 minus p into p plus 1 minus p squared into p yes, and so on so if you add it you will see that this forms a geometric series see, right geometric the probability some subs like a geometric series yes ma'am got it yeah right Yes, so this problem that's is why the name always uh, results why. in a geometric series. Yeah, yes. that's why the no name comes. So, yes. really, if you look at the binomial distribution, uh, you see, uh, you know, the binomial coefficient and all, a plus b to the power n is n choose k uh, a to the power n, all that. That binomial coefficient expansion. So, from there, the binomial distribution name comes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So where were we? Uh, all right. So we found this inequality that probability x greater than j to the power n is equal to one minus p to the power j n. Can you tell us again the what does j represent here? Sorry. J represent. Oh, j what j represent? So what is j here? So okay, basically your interest was interest was to find. to find the probability that x1 greater than j x2 greater than j up to xn greater than j okay and you know okay so you know all these xi follow geometric p so if i am saying if i am saying that probability x greater than j okay so what does it mean it means that your first success is going to happen after this jth trial right this is what it means right first success happens on the j after this jth trial so what is the probability that your first success occurs after the jth trial so this is the probability that you get it is nothing but 1 minus p to the power j right yes ma'am got it yes ma'am Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, before we move to the next topic, uh, can you can somebody check if YouTube link is working now? It has been updated. Ma'am, it's still not working. Still not working. No, ma'am. Oh, okay. Ma'am, the link is working. It's working. Yes. Ah, uh, can somebody else also check? Ma'am, it's writing. Can uh, you refresh? It, can you refresh and check? Yes, ma'am. From uh, the link provided in Google Calendar, that is not working, and uh, the link just provided here in the chat box is also not working. No, 
can you please it's share working. which link is working it's working now B both links are uh, the it's same and uh, it's not working i mean it's working exactly yeah. The link uh, is working, working, man. Just to refresh and check. Yeah, just yeah, refresh, refresh and check. check. It has been updated, so it should work. I guess some for some it is working, for some it is. No, no, no. It is now. It is working. The calendar is now. It is working. I'm refreshing it. No, you close it. Maybe give it some time. It it should work. It should work. Yeah. Yeah, new link is shared in the chat box. Yeah, thanks. Okay, let's move. No, no, if you, oh. if you working. Okay. The link shared in the chat box is working. The one in the calendar is not working. No, calendar, it is working. It is working. Yes, yeah, calendar has been updated. You just close and then again open and check. It is working. Then, the, then I guess uh, the, the calendar has to be updated. No, it's updated. It has been updated. Okay. Yeah, if you many people are saying that it is updated in the calendar, it should be updated. Yeah, it is. It is working. It's working. Yeah. Topic. Well, okay. It is working. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Let's let's move forward. Then uh, one hour ago in the calendar, there is a heading that Zoom link, but inside there is a Google Meet link. <laughs> Uh, it, okay. it is now updated, ma'am, in the calendar and everywhere. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, from next time it will be fine. Yes. Brother, Why we have shifted our meeting on to the meet? Uh, Zoom meeting, uh, it's much more convenient for us, actually. So that's why. All right, let's. Uh, ma ma can, can we share the Jamboard, ma'am, later after the session is over? Uh, because Jam Jam sorry. Jamboard is not accessible to us, basically. See, it is restricted. Oh, yeah, it is restricted. Let me. For IIT, you know. Yes. I will make it in the next. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So next, you have a problem. Um, okay, the problem says you have a random variable x. Okay, you have a random variable x, and it takes a value zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's say x takes the value 0 with probability 1 by 2. It takes the value 1 with probability 1 by 4. It takes the value 2 with probability 1 by 8, 3 with probability 1 by 16, and 4 with probability 1 by 16. Okay. Uh, so the first equation that was given was kind of easy. So I will directly move to the third question that is given in the uh, lecture. So here, what does it say is you have n IID sample, okay? You have x1, x2, up to xn, IID x, all right? Now the question is, what is the probability that 3 and 4 appear at least once? Can you mute? If you're not speaking, please mute. So we have to find the probability that 3 and 4 appear at least once, OK? So this can be written as, so basically 3 and 4 appear at least once means what? You have observed a sample x1, x2 up to xn, and they are coming from this random variable x, OK? So the sample that you have observed here, this xn, you are saying that what is the probability that 3 and 4 appear at least once? Okay. So I can define two events here. I can define two events. Let's define the event A to be 3 appears 
at least once and let define the event b to be four appears at least once so see here it is written as and so you know and can be written as intersection so this is nothing but you have to find the probability that a intersection b so if we have to find the probability that uh, uh, 3 and 4 appear at least once we can find the probability okay so also you know that this can be written as using de morgan uh, all of you know de morgan's law right yes yes yeah so this can be written as a intersection union, union b intersection, intersection complement basically it's complement okay so probability a complement union b complement the whole complement this will give you probability a intersection b so why we did that is because it is difficult to find the probability that 3 and 4 appear at least once it is difficult to find the probability a intersection b so we are going this way we are trying to find the probability a complement union b complement whole complement okay so if a was defined to be 3 appears at least once what what do we mean by a complement a never appears three three never, three never appears. appears yeah three never appears so what is mean by b complement four never appears right yeah so let's find out probability a complement union b complement so what is this going to be this i can write it as using the mul uh using this union intersection form this you can write it as probability a complement plus, b plus complement. probability b complement minus mm -hmm. probability a complement intersection b complement okay now let's try to find out probability a complement so what is the first thing is what is probability a complement so what is a complement a complement is what is the probability that a three never appears three, appear. uh, three, three never, never appears appear. right yes 1 minus 1 by 8 1 by 16 sorry 1 no. minus 1 no. by 16 1 uh, minus 1 by 16 that is okay, 15 uh, okay. by 16 okay okay wait let me write the distribution of x here uh, it is not possible to remember this yeah 2 3 4 Zero is one by two. One, by one is one by four. It is one, one by, by eight. eight in one by sixteen. Sixteen and one by sixteen. Sixteen. So if we have to find the probability that three never appears, it means only this zero, zero one, one two. two four appears. Yeah. So what are the probabilities? One by one, four, one minus okay. one by sixteen. That is fifteen no, by sixteen. That is not like that. Yeah, one minus one by sixteen. Sixteen. Or you can. Yeah, I mean it is going to be same. Right? Same yes, thing. Yes, going to be yeah. same, but conceptually that is not equal. Ah, uh, why not? It's equal. It's equal, right? I mean, yes. Ah, uh, if you sum all these probabilities, it should give you one. So if you have to find the probability that x equal zero plus x probability x equal one plus probability x equal two plus probability x equal four, it is same as one minus probability that x equal three. So I can write this as one minus one by sixteen. Okay. One by sixteen. That is fifteen by sixteen. So this is fifteen by sixteen. Okay. So second is what is the probability that uh, a complement? Similarly, four never appears. So again, it is fifteen by sixteen, right? Yeah. Now we need to find probability a complement intersection b complement. So what does it mean? It means that in the sample, one to x n, 
Kriya and Kriya never Kriya. appears and four also Kriya never, never appears. appears. So basically, probability that x one should also not be equal to three comma four, x two should also be not equal to three comma four, up to x n should also be not equal to three comma four. All right. So this I can write it as since all these x i's are independent. I can write probability that x is x should not be equal to three comma four. This to the power n. So basically, if x is not equal to three comma four, it means x is zero to one two. And what is this probability? One by two plus one by four plus one by eight, right? So two plus four, six plus seven, seven by eight. So seven by eight, I can write it as fourteen by sixteen to the power n. Ma'am, in probability of b complement, okay, it's two fifty uh, by sixty four to the power n. Power n, n, it should yes. be n. Yeah, because we are talking about n random variables here. Right? Yes. Yeah. So now we just have to substitute all this here. So it you will get what you will get. Fifteen by sixteen to the power n twice because both are equal. Minus what is a complement intersection b complement? It is fourteen by sixteen to the power n. So minus fourteen by sixteen to the power n. And you have to find uh, basically complement. So it is going to be one minus this value. This value, right? So is this clear to all? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma How do you get fourteen by sixteen? You get fourteen by sixteen. Yeah, I'm also confused with seven by eight. You get seven, seven by eight. eight. Then multiply. You got seven by eight, no? So, uh, since all uh, uh, the first and second, the denominator what part was sixteen. So to make it uh, to make the denominator sixteen, I just multiply by two. Okay. I mean the values of zero, one, and two. Zero, one, and two. So if okay. you add these three, yeah, okay. If you take L C M, then you get the sum by eight. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Why to subtract it from one? Sorry, why to subtract from one? Because okay. you have to find. The whole you are complement. interested in finding this probability A intersection B, and this is equal to probability A complement union B complement. Whole complement, and what we found is we found just probability A complement union B complement. Okay, okay. So for the whole complement, we have for the whole complement, we have to again subtract from one. Okay. Right? Okay. All right. So let's next move to memoryless property. Uh, so we could not uh, find the final mind. solution without knowing the value of n, right? Uh, no, you cannot. So the answer will be in terms of n. So basically, if you say you have four uh, samples, then it will be four. If you have three samples, it will be three. If you have five samples, it will be five. It will vary with n. No, Ma'am, uh, why it shouldn't be the multiplication of the items that one by two into one by four into one by eight? Uh, so basically, I thought it's an independent uh, event. So, uh you are talking about the last one yes yes instead of 14 i mean we are doing a addition of 0 plus 1 plus 2 right that mm -hmm. is 1 mm -hmm. by 2 plus 1 by 4 mm -hmm. plus 1 by uh mm -hmm. when it should be a multiplication uh 1 by 2 into 1 by 4 into 1 by 8 Oh, it should be uh, multiplication when uh, means uh, there are two parts independent mm -hmm. events and mutually exclusive right so when it is an independent uh, P of A intersection B should be P of A into P of B. Sometimes it will so, be mutual exclusion. So okay, independence students. independence we already used here, right? Like uh, since all these x i's were independent, I could write this as x probability x not equal to three by four to the bar n. Okay. Okay. This is fine. Now you are saying that x should not be equal to three comma four. If X is now this X is just one random variable, right? Hmm. Yeah. This X is just one random variable which has yeah. this distribution. Okay. Yes. And you are saying what is the probability that 
x is not equal to 3 4 so mm -hmm. to find this we need to find the probability that either x equal 0 or x equal 1 or x equal 4 oh. or x equal okay. 2 right so yes. if i'm saying either 0 or 1 or 2 so i will have to add all these probabilities okay okay, okay. it's an either or case okay fine yeah. thank you yeah okay ma'am why we choose to solve it by using complement yeah because uh, see uh, that's what i said if uh, you had to find what is the probability that 3 and 4 appear at least once right so it is quite difficult to solve it in this way right don't you feel so since you have n random variables and you have to find the probability that the pair that you take does those n random variable that you take all this uh, on uh, like none of them should have i mean everyone uh sorry means in the whole thing three and four should appear at least once so either three can appear once or twice or thrice and so on similarly four should appear one or twice or twice and so on right so it's kind of difficult to find so whenever we have we come across a situation where you have to find even in the probability finding probability if you had to find the probability that something appears at least once then a uh, one easy way to do it is you do one minus probability that like uh, nothing appears something so if yeah we calculated so. for the uh, appearance not uh, instead of uh, what are not appear. Yeah, like it never. If you take uh, the negation or uh, the complement, right? So yeah. if if the event was to find us, three appears at least once. So if you take the complement, so if something is appearing at least once, it means it should appear at least once. Then if you take the negation of it, mean the complement of it, it means that thing should never happen, right? It is never appearing. Ha. Uh -huh. So. Uh, that is the easier way to solve such problem. So once you define your event in the complement way, you can easily write, you can easily find A complement, you can easily find B complement and its whole complement. So that is why uh, we have gone through this method. Okay. Yeah. Let's move ahead. So next is memoryless property. of geometric distribution. Now uh, I'm saying that X is a geometric distribution with the parameter P. So one relation that I have we had already found is probability that X is greater than some J, right? What what was this? This was one minus P to the power j right this we found already here yeah. Yeah? yeah here we found so this i'm going to use here now uh, so let's write it in the term of n so in place of j let's write it m so in place of j i'm just writing it as n okay then what does memoryless property says is probability that x is greater than m plus n given x is already greater than m this is same as probability that x is greater than n so what does it mean is like uh, okay before uh, looking at the explanation let's try to prove it okay so you have to prove this term now what is probability x greater than m plus n given x greater than m okay this is conditional this is conditional probability yes and this can be written as probability that x is greater than m plus n comma x is greater than m divided by probability x is greater than m right so let's see here 
it said this is our m or this is our m plus n right now if i'm saying that x is greater than m okay and x is greater than so this is comma is what comma is basically and and means intersection so if x is greater than m already and i'm saying x is also greater than m plus n right yeah. then what is the common uh, reason greater than m plus n greater than m plus n so this i can write it as probability that x is greater than m plus n divided by probability that x is greater than m right so now using this first expression this i can write it as 1 minus p to the power m plus n divided by 1 minus p to the power m right and this is nothing but 1 minus p to the power n n so saying that you will get the first success after m plus n trial if already after uh, till m trial you have not got the first success this is same as finding the probability that your first success is coming after n trial like let's take the example for tossing of a coin okay so how many tosses you need to get the first head let's say so if i'm saying that you did not get a head till let's say 10 toss okay let's say till 10 toss if i'm writing m to be 10 so if till 10 toss you did not get the first head okay then probability that uh, you will have to you will get the first toss after like 10 plus uh, let's say again 10 10 plus 10 trial it means 20 trial is same as saying that you will get the first head after the 10th trial yes it means something you start from the beginning basically i mean instead of saying that no, it's just start, like see, huh? since i haven't got any success till amateur huh? trial mm -hmm. and uh, i want that i do not get any uh, any success till m plus n trial so the point is that in the next end trial, I should not get any success, right? No, basically it says is like now uh, saying that you will get the first success after M plus N trial is same as finding that you will get the first success after the nth trial. I mean, if you are saying probability is greater than N trial, so it means you are starting from the beginning, right? I mean... You will again start from probability x equal 1, x equal 2. So instead of doing this m plus n, you can just do x greater than n. I mean, instead of doing probability x greater than m plus n. Mathematically, I understand, but like mathematically, I understand, but logically, it means I am not able to draw the relationship. Uh, not able to draw the relationship. Explain it again using example. Yes, why, why is it so? I mean, mathematically, also for me. But, uh, for yeah, a, let's say you have uh, the situation like you are interested in uh, getting the first head, okay? Now, what I'm saying is, let's say till some 100 toss, 100 toss, you did not get any head, okay? Now, if you have to find like what is the probability that you will get the first toss after let's say 100 and uh, 120th toss okay it is same as that you find the probability that your first toss appears after the 20th toss so instead of saying instead of finding the probability that your first head appears after this 120th toss you can just do what is the probability that x greater than 28 toss so i mean ma'am uh, this means only this now that uh, my 101th mm -hmm. trial i can treat as one 
and yeah, once you said yeah, you basically, like yeah, basically, yeah, same same yeah i mean basically it is you can start from the beginning and you just say this is you, uh, we can start from here it will mean the same thing yeah it will mean the same thing that's all yeah yeah the memory list means uh, the first 100 trials doesn't matter first 100 trial doesn't matter yeah basically that So there is one more important problem that is discussed here. So it's a very important property actually. It says uh, sum of uh, two independent poison. So it says if you have a random variable x that is poison with the parameter lambda 1 and you have another random variable y that is also a poison random variable with the parameter lambda 2 and if I am saying that x and y are independent okay if I am saying that x and y are independent then a new random variable z that is equal to x plus y okay this will be i will say this will be also distributed as a poison random variable with the parameter lambda 1 plus lambda 2 okay. so we have come to the function of random variable basically you have a random variable x you have a random variable y we are saying these two random variables are independent now what should be the distribution of x plus y? So x Hello, plus ma'am. Yeah. Z equals to x plus y tilde poison lambda poison of lambda one plus lambda two. How you get that? Yeah, I, I am saying this is a this is what we are going to prove now. I have just written the result. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, all right. Okay, so before uh, we before we prove this, there is a very important uh, point here. So it is called convolution. Okay. So what convolution says is, let's say you have two random variable here, x and y, and it is jointly distributed as f x y. Okay you are taking a random variable z to be x plus y all right and again x and y are independent and i'm just taking it like that now if you have to find the probability that capital z take some value small z this is same as finding probability that what how is z capital z defined this is x plus y so I can write probability this x plus y is equal to z, right? And this we can write it as probability that x takes, capital X takes some value small x and this capital Y takes some value that is z minus x, right? And this is going to be sum over, how will x vary? Zero. x will vary from minus infinity to infinity since we don't know the range here okay i'm just taking it as minus infinity to infinity now this term this term can be written as f x y right f x y x comma z minus x right Till here it is clear? That's good. Okay. Now, let's say x and y are independent. If x and y are independent, I will write it here. If x and y are independent, this can also be written as sum over 
x varying from minus infinity to infinity hello ma'am yeah how did you get x equals to minus infinity to infinity uh since the range is not specified here no i mean i'm just taking uh some random variable it, x y it must be start from zero right yeah it can start from zero i mean if nothing is given i'm just saying the range of course should vary from minus infinity to infinity if something is given okay ma'am yeah all right so this was when i had taken this x to be x now what happens if i take i will write in the next page so what happens if we write this as in terms of y so this can also be written as probability z equal to z is same as sum over y varying from minus infinity to infinity probability uh y equal small y and x equal y hmm. minus sorry z hmm. minus y this is z minus y so z minus y okay Now, so both can write independent, and we can write the number of. Sorry, your voice is breaking. Your voice, can you repeat? Your voice is breaking. Hello. He and both well, then both are independent, independent, right? So we can multiply. Ah, uh, yeah, we can multiply. Yes, that is. Yeah. I, I, From that there also we can derive. Uh, I think. Sorry, I didn't get it. What are you trying to say? Now, if we multiply and open this bracket, then mm -hmm. then also we can derive uh, this thing. No, no, I'm I'm just saying that this we have written in terms of x. So the same thing I'm writing in terms of y. That's it. Okay. So so this is going to be probability y varying from minus infinity to infinity. Ah, uh, this is f x y of z minus y. by now since we have taken x and y to be independent okay since x and y are independent we can write probability z equal to z equal to sum over fx of i can write this as fx of z minus y times times f by of Y, where y is varying from minus infinity to infinity, and this is same as writing that x varying from minus infinity to infinity, f x of x into f y of z minus y. Z minus x. Ah, sorry, z minus x. Right. It is clear, right? this result is clear because we are going to use it a lot after this yes ma'am yes yeah okay so now let's move let's go back to our this proof okay so let's prove this so what we are saying is that x is poisson lambda 1 y is poisson lambda 2 your z is x plus y x and y are independent then you have to find the what is z fc of z yeah this is you have to find so okay so what is fc of z let's write it small z now this is same as probability Z equal to small z, right? And this is nothing but probability that x plus y equal to small z, right? And from the previous result, this one, ah, uh, we can write this as sum over f x of x into f y of Z minus x. Now, what is the range of x going to be here? Zero to zero to zero to z. Zero to zero to z. 
poison infinity it cannot be greater than z because if it is greater than yeah. z then right yes because yes. y is poison right so it will restrict to just z this is clear to everyone all right small yes ma'am yes, ma now uh, what is f of x So, ma'am, f of x also poison, right? Yeah, x, x is poison. poison. Y is poison. So, so, f x of x can be written as e to the power e minus e lambda, lambda, lambda one basically, e to the power minus lambda one, lambda one to the power x by x factorial, right? And the second term can be written as e to the power minus lambda two. Lambda two to the power z, z minus x upon z minus x factorial. Okay. Ma'am, wh what happened when x uh, get x greater than j for uh, f of x? Okay. Oh, okay. So see, I will write it here. Uh, okay. You can see that uh, you have f y z minus x, right? And what is the distribution of f? Uh, what is the distribution of y? It is Poisson. Poisson, yes. Y is Poisson lambda two. And what is the range of Poisson? Zero, zero, one up to infinity. Infinity. Zero, one up to infinity. Now, if you take the range of x from zero to infinity, then what happens is, uh, in this f y z minus x term, you will get f y of z minus You will get negative here, right? Yes. But a Poisson random variable cannot take a negative value. It can only take these values. It starts from zero, one, two, and so on. Okay, okay. And that is why we are restricting this limit of x to be z. Okay, got it, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, so after this, we will solve. So we have. Uh, could you just this. go back to the last slide? Uh, yeah. You've explained why the range goes to z, but uh, why does it start from x is equal to zero? Ah, uh, because uh, x is Poisson random variable, right? And the range of Poisson starts from zero. Okay, for that reason. Yeah, yeah, for that reason only. Like if it was, let's say, geometric distribution, then I would have started from one. Right. If it was binomial, I would have started from zero. So depending on what your random variable is, you will start from there. Okay. Okay. Now, so at the end, we had gotten the expression e to the power minus lambda one, lambda one to the power x upon x factorial, e to the power minus lambda two, lambda two to the power z minus x upon z minus x factorial. X is varying from zero to z. Now you see that e to the power minus lambda one, e to the power minus lambda two is a constant. I can pull it out, so I can write e to the power minus lambda one plus lambda two. Okay. And in the summation part, I can write e to the power. Sorry, not e to the power. What we will be left with, we will be left with uh, lambda one to the power x, lambda two, so lambda one to the power x, lambda two to the power z minus x, uh, divided by x factorial z minus x factorial. So divide and multiply by uh, z factorial. Yeah. So x factorial z minus x factorial. So I am multiplying and dividing here by z factorial. So, okay. What will happen is, you will get. Take one z factorial out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am writing it here. So e to the power minus lambda one. Plus lambda two. Take one of the z factorial out. 
then inside you see this thing this z factorial by x factorial this whole thing this you can what what exactly is this zcx zcx right zcx so this is zcx right so this is z factorial by x factorial into z minus x factorial into lambda 1 to the power x and lambda 2 to the power z minus x okay and x is varying from 0 to z now if you write if you look at this whole expression binomial this is yeah this is Bi binomial yeah. yeah binomial expansion so this is lambda 1 plus lambda 2 to the power z z so this is this expansion uh, uh, so i have a doubt at this point can you please just explain it in more sorry for the interruption okay so uh, what is the binomial coefficient uh, expansion of this you will write first z choose 0 right i will i will write it in the next page so you have uh, lambda 1 plus lambda 2 to the power z okay so if you have to write the binomial expansion of this you will write z choose x lambda 1 to the power 0 lambda 2 to the power z minus 0 plus z choose 1 lambda 1 to the power 1 lambda 2 to the power z minus 1 and so on right and it will go on to z choose z, z. lambda 1 to the power z, z. and lambda 2 to the power 0 z. and this is same as writing that this is z choose x Lambda one to the power x and lambda two to the power z minus, z minus x, x. Okay. where z x is varying from zero to zero. And this is z. a binomial coefficient, binomial expansion basically. Binomial expansion. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So this is what we have written here. Now, if you solve this, you will get e to the power minus lambda one plus lambda two. Divided by z factorial into lambda one plus lambda two to the power z. Now, if you look closely, it is nothing but it is. Uh, I said lambda lambda one plus lambda two. Voice on distribution, right? With the it's parameter lambda just lambda one lambda plus lambda two. So you see, uh, the expansion is e to the power minus lambda. So in this case, lambda is lambda one plus lambda two. Lambda to the power z, so lambda one plus lambda to the power z divided by z factorial. So probability, uh, so F C of z is voice on lambda one plus lambda two. I hope this is clear. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now the next that you have to. Uh, Derive is what is? Uh, could you just go back to the previous slide? Yeah. So uh, we are saying if two uh, random variable variables. If you have two distributed. random variable that is Poisson distributed, and if they are independent, yes. Then there sum is also going to be Poisson distributed with the parameter lambda one plus lambda two. Ma'am, can we extend is, to three okay. random variable, ma'am? Like lambda one plus you lambda two plus lambda three, like three random variable. Okay, if you extend to three random variable, uh, the sum. Yes, I will take it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Actually, we can extend it to three random variables. Proof will be a little uh, tricky. Okay, so three are proof? independent. Any two are independent also. If you are uh, independent, no. then uh, if you are saying are you have three random variables and they all are independent, then yeah, it can be extended to a random variable, and we will say that, I mean, again, it is going to be Poisson distributed with the parameter lambda one plus lambda two up to lambda n. 
that is true but the derivation part uh, is a little tricky then uh, any two will be uh, independent any two will be independent yeah, so yeah any two will be independent yes, so their distribution will be lambda one plus lambda two and that uh, distribution and the third distribution if you consider it will be lambda one plus lambda two plus lambda three yeah that is also fine Oh, here is it sufficient for us to know this property that the sum of two independent? Yeah, uh, if, uh, I mean the derivation part you can skip if you if this tricky for you. Do we use the derivation anywhere? No, no, no. you don't have to use the derivation. The derivation it's just for understanding, just for understanding it better. Understanding. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's it's uh, good enough if you can remember this property that sum of two Poisson is going to give you Poisson random variable with the, Ma so, so adding two lambdas is enough. Yeah, yeah, it's enough. That. Yeah. Parameter, okay. In yeah. the last two lectures uh, in the video section, there were we were most oriented towards the property. So where will we'll be taking, going to look into the, these properties? Yes. Like example, to find binomial from Bernoulli trials and sum of two uniform from poison to poison, sum of poisons. Where we will be. Okay. Their, their applications basically. Uh, their applications. You will see in the problem. There are problems in the assignment. Yes, ma'am. One of the problems uh, they have said that uh, sum of two binomial uh, distributions. Mm -hmm. is, suppose we have one binomial as n one p and the second one as n two p. Then their yeah. the then... sum is n one plus n two p. Yeah. So that derivation is not given in the lectures. Uh, right? See, derivation is not so important. You can, if you can but remember. But to remember, ma'am, uh, if the derivation, if we know, then it becomes easier to remember. Yeah, so I, I remember like sir has given you as a As a yes, sir. assignment to do. But, but uh, it was very difficult to. Yeah, do. also, if you are, um, uh, I would suggest you all to like check this course because uh, few of them are already solved there. Any students are posted in the previous part, so you can just search and find it. Okay. But, uh, the, the derivation which you just showed was already in the lecture. But this derivation was not there in the lecture, so that's why I think. Uh, yeah, you can you can find it uh, on this course. Ma'am, is it a recorded session, ma'am? Will it be uploaded? Because I joined late. Oh, it is uh, streaming on YouTube. Okay, thank you, ma'am. All right, so we have half okay. Uh, now let's try to find what is the distribution of P. Uh, not P, what is the distribution of X given Z or Y given Z is going to be? Okay, so if you have to find the distribution, let's say I'm finding the distribution of X given Z first. So it is going to be basically probability that X is some K given Z equal N. Okay. Given Z equal N, this is going to be probability X equal K, Z equal N. Okay divided by probability z equal n all right now the numerator part this i can write it as since uh, we already know the distribution of uh, x i this i can write it as probability x equal k y equal uh, z uh, n minus k uh, where is y coming from if if x is k then uh, y has to be uh, no here we're talking about uh, okay you have already uh, went to that step okay okay fine so so basically z equal n given x equal k right this is how the numerator will look like divided probability z equal n now given x equal k your y should be n minus k. So this is probability that x equal k into probability y equal n minus k divided by probability that z equal n. 
so again you you do the calculation you know what is the distribution of x you know what is the distribution of y you know what is the distribution of z right if you solve it you will get this comes out to be a binomial distribution with the parameter n comma lambda 1 by lambda 1 plus lambda 2 just try try it out this is also given in the lecture this is also given in the lecture yeah Will you please repeat it again? Ah, uh, okay. So what I just said is uh, probability x equal k. You know it is Poisson distributed. Probability y equal n minus k. You know it is again ah uh, Poisson distributed. Z you also know it is Poisson distributed. Just put the formula of the ah uh, EMF and then solve it. You will get uh, this to be binomial distribution with. Parameter n comma lambda one by lambda one plus lambda two. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get this part. How we got p uh, probability x is equal to k and y is equal to n minus k. Okay, so look at this uh, second step here. So what is this? This is given x equal k. Yeah. What is the probability that z equal n? Okay. So if x equal to k okay, then what should the y be you know z equal x plus y right oh well, this is just an extension of what we've just done this is a yeah okay in continuation to that yeah so that would uh, x plus y so if uh, z is n and x is k then y, y is going to be n minus k okay and if we put this in uh, using the using the poison from poison formula hmm then we will so, so what is probability x equal k it is e to the power minus lambda 1 lambda 1 to the power k by k factorial what yes. is probability y equal n minus k it is going to be e to the power minus lambda 2 lambda yes. 2 to the power n minus k by n minus k factorial yes then what is probability z equal n it is going to be probab uh, e to the power minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 e lambda 1 plus lambda 2 to the power n divided by n factorial yes right? so once you put all these formulas and solve it finally you will get that it is a nothing but binomial distribution with the parameter n comma lambda 1 by lambda 1 plus lambda 2 okay so we'll have to solve and check that yeah you solve and check it's on uh, this calculation thank you yeah so in this now, step it's a hmm? in this step uh, the step where you have written p x equal to k z equal to n in this step itself we can say that this is equal to p p x equal to k z equal to n is equal to p x equal to k y equal to Uh, n minus k you cannot be say in this step itself. Ah, uh, so you mean x equal to k and z ah uh, yeah you can z. say you can say in the first step like uh, you are saying ah uh, uh, we have to find what is the probability that x equal k comma z equal n. So yeah, if uh, means both should happen. So x equal k and z equal to n should happen. So basically, it is same as probability x equal k comma y, y equal n minus k. k. And since they are independent. Uh, I can write it separately. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, now we have two more topics left. So one is the uh, maximum of two random variable. Maximum. And minimum. Now, can we take two minutes break? Ah, uh, two minutes break. Ah, uh, okay. Let's start from nine thirty-six. It's fine. Ah, uh, everyone wants the break. Madam, can I? Uh, uh, can I ask? Yes, uh, okay. Can I ask you something uh, in these two minutes, if that's okay? Ah, uh, all right. It's fine. Okay. 
so I joined in the diploma level uh, after the qualifier, and uh, I find this going everything top of my head. Uh, what did you find? So can you repeat? Can you hear me, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. So I joined in the uh, direct diploma level. Okay. And uh, I did some basic preparation for qualifier. Okay. It is. It was not extensive. And I'm not okay. from a statistics background. Okay. Uh, and what is being taught uh, in the lecture or even here, I find it totally different and very tough to comprehend. Uh, is is there a, a a book I can read or understand or what is the pro, what is the procedure to grasp this? You know, okay. from a very general at a very general level, I'm asking. Uh, all right. So, uh, in the qualifier, if you have given the qualifier, you would have seen the stats one course, right? I mean, yes. you would have seen this uh, permutation combination. You would have seen random variable. Yes. Uh, then all the dis uh, discrete distribution you would have seen. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. So this is just the extension of what we had seen in stats one. So in stats one, basically we had seen only one random variable, but in stats two, we are jumping to two random variables. Okay. Yeah. And this stats two uh, somehow it's going to be very mathematical oriented. So. For the reference, uh, so the reference for this. There is a gap between two and stats two. Ma'am, I, 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 I think. I think. Hmm? Oh I God! Think, please. Uh, hello. Just. Uh, ah, yeah. Please. I think the, uh, I'm also a experienced guy. I'm uh, working, uh, and I'm also fa facing similar problem. Okay. What uh, he has said, but hmm. uh, the thing is that in stats one we are having a lot of tuto sessions. Which you have uploaded what, over lot there. Of, lot of what sessions? Tutorials. 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 Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Very, very yes. well said. Very well said. Okay. And then, uh, what we, what, uh, what is that here uh, is uh, deficient in this uh, course? So we and are not one, able to get. And one more right. thing, um, there is a gap between stats one and stats two, to my knowledge. Even I am a direct diploma person. Okay. Um, who I just given the qualifier and come. Uh, as Mr. Um, Kuman has told, uh, all these topics are literally going above my head. Some of them are really very com difficult to comprehend, and there is some gap between stats one and stats two. Because the level, because the level of a stats two requires a lot more rigorous uh, practice, and okay. that's why I was asking. That that that's why I, I was asking for the practice book for these uh, upcoming weeks to be uploaded prior to the you know, commencement of any week. So that we okay. can learn yeah. uh, before, and then we can, uh, because the deadlines are going there, and uh, we are mm -hmm. running on to the deadline. <laughs> Ma'am, please Let continue the session. Uh, we just yeah, I'll, yeah, I will continue. I'm, I'll continue the session. Uh, so if you can please communicate to the, if you can please yeah. communicate uh, my thing to. So your question was like, how if there is a reference book, right, someone? So, no, what, uh, is the, what is the bridge which can go with stats one and stats two? Ma'am, please tell the reference book also, ma'am. Yeah, please. so reference book, uh, oh, I'm, I'm not sure it would have Refer seen. Just a moment, please. I'm really yeah. sorry to interrupt. Yeah, please uh, um, uh, let, let him finish his sentence first. Uh, just a minute. Yeah. I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah. See, the reference book is given in the it's course introduction yeah. in the portal. Yes, and uh, right. we. Uh, Whatever the other uh, student said, I respect that and I understand, you know, uh, why you are saying that. But, you know, I would like uh, the the instructor to please answer my question as yeah. to as to how generally to get hold of this topic. I'm not talking okay. about, uh, you know, in individual chapters or individual uh, concepts mm -hmm. that there, there should be a missing piece, you know, an overall approach or a mindset which is missing, I'm sure. So, uh, if you could please talk about that, you know, in a very, uh, in, a, in a very brief way, uh, I would really appreciate that. Okay, so, uh, so Manta, uh, please I'm continue. sure you would have. Uh, yeah, just give me two minutes. I will start. So, uh, I'm sure you would have done uh, 
random variables you know the concept of random variables distributions basic distributions properly uh, is it uh, yes you know right what is random variable uh, what yes. is distribution all the basic distributions you know yes so uh, the moment we come to week 1 here we start talking about two random variables so we had one random variable before and now we are talking about what like in practical cases we don't have we are not going to deal with just one random variable right we will have more than one random variable so if more than one random variable comes how are you going to deal with that so we are starting the basic steps that start first dealing with two random variables it's just extension of one random variable basically so here we talked about the, what is the probability of occurrence of uh an event where x equal x and y equal y so all this uh we are going like all this we are going to say in starts to basically and if you want uh, a reference material uh, so have you studied sheldon ross have you i am sure starts one that was a reference book uh, no. no you have not seen sheldon ross right no Okay, so Sheldon Ross was uh, uh, like suggested in Starts One course. Uh, even all these things are uh, given there, like two random variables. How do you find the joint distribution? All these basic things are uh, properly given there. They have a lot of examples also. So the okay. basics you can try from there. would this be a, an appropriate question for the student mentor who comes with the between the 7 to 9 slot actually okay. yesterday i tried to ask a doubt in that class but uh, there was nobody responding in that class oh all right uh, so you have a mentors uh, session from 7 to 9 is it yes yeah uh, was it today yes. no not today but uh, nobody was answering it so i just left so who was the mentor for you uh, for your batch uh don't know ma'am i was in the chat i was just trying to interact with the persons who were there uh, since nobody was uh, responding i waited for almost a half an hour okay uh, since nobody was responding i left the meeting oh, okay uh okay. Uh, ma'am it's okay i'll probably I'll I'll study, study room ma'am sorry Okay, let's let's talk about this after the session. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get back to our problem. So now we are going to deal with what are the can maximum? We, how do you find? Understand? Can we understand the topic maximum and minimum using the uh, PMF table? Ah, we can. We will. We will. That, yeah. That is visualizing function. That. professor told during the lectures uh, that is LC yeah using pmf using yeah using the table it's much easier yeah okay yeah so uh, here we are going to see like if you have two random variables uh, and we know their distributions so how do you find their uh, maximum or minimum what is the distribution of maximum or minimum of those two random variable okay so let's say you have a random variable x you have a random variable y and i am saying that they are jointly distributed so their probability is given as fxy of x comma y now we are defining another random variable z that is nothing but minimum of two random variable x comma y okay so what is going to be the distribution of minimum of xy so f fc of z this is going to be probability that minimum of xy is equal to z right if i uh, can you mute mute yeah all right so if i'm saying probability that minimum is z so you have two random variable x and y and i am saying that and where capital x is taking the value small x and uh, capital y is taking the value small y okay and 
we are saying that the minimum of these two is z so one possibility is that both the sex and y is z it is possible right that both the values come out to be z then then the minimum of z yes this is yes one possibility. yes so one possibility, possibility is that x is z and y is also z okay then the second possibility is that let's say our minimum since there are just two random variable it is possible that our capital x uh, means x takes the value z x is z and if the minimum is z y should be greater than z yes right and another yes. possibility can be that your y takes the value z your y takes the value z and your x is greater than z yes right? you can have three different cases so this i can write it as probability that x is z and y is z or i can write probability that x is z but y is greater than z or i can write probability that x is greater than z y equal z right now yes. since x and y okay so the first expansion of the first uh, term here this is what this is nothing but fx y o z comma z the second term here what how can we write this here x equal to z but y can take any value that is greater than z so we'll have to add all that right so i can write fx y of let's say some z comma some t or let's say t dash where t dash should be greater than z okay and this third expression here even the y is fixed x is varying and x is greater than z so this is going to be sum over fx y some let's say write it as sum t comma z where t is greater than z is this fine yes ma'am it so okay so here we have find the pmf of minimum of two discrete random variable okay now if the same thing we have to find the maximum let's say now i am defining z equal maximum of xy all right so what is the distribution going to be so f z of z this is going to be probability that maximum of xy is going to take the value z okay so again the same thing you have to let's say capital x is taking the value small x is capital y is taking the value small y and we are saying that maximum of these two is equal to z okay so if the maximum is z so again one possibility is that both of these x and y comes out to be z second possibility can be that the maximum is our x huh? and if x is the maximum the one case can be y is less than y this minimum. maximum right yes and the third possibility is if i am fixing my y to be maximum then x should be less than maximum right so again we yes. have three cases and we will do the all the same procedure so this we will write it as fx y z comma z plus sum over f x y z comma some random variable yeah uh t comma some z where t is less than z plus sum over f x y uh z comma some t dash where t dash is less than z That's right this is clear 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now let's take one example here. Uh, ma'am, like there is a formula like uh, the uh -huh. in maximum case there is a formula like two z minus one divided by n square. If z uh, is taking value. Yes, that I didn't understand. Yeah. Yes. How did formula came in? in the lectures? Uh, uh, the yes. Told us like. Yeah, so there's a formula like if z is taking value any small z, then the maximum mm -hmm. of that thing is like uh, 2z minus 1 divided by n square. This is the formula of z n. minus 1 divided by n square. Where is it? And this is given the, the, the sum, lecture, of two, right? sum of two uniform uh, random variables. Okay. Sum of two uniform random variables. Uh, we'll come to it. We'll come to it. Let's finish okay. this first. Let's finish today, whatever we can, whatever rest, we can do it next session. Okay. okay. Uh, let's look at one example. So let's say you have two random variable, x comma y, x, y, okay. And let's say x is taking the value uh, Just one. one question. Uh, in the previous slide, this summation goes to what? It's less than z, but up to? Uh, whatever range yes, are like given the range yes whatever range are whatever given whatever range input. whatever range you have whatever the range of x is basically starting from uh, its lower bound to up its upper bound of the range yeah so basically t will let's say if x was uh, a binomial random variable right so your t sh should start from zero and it should stop at what uh, right. before whatever your maximum is. Should it should stop at z minus one, right? Okay. Yeah. Let's look at the example. So let's say you have two random variable x and y, and x is taking the value one and two, and y is another random variable that is taking the value, let's say zero one two. Uh, let's write something. Let's write it as 1 by 16. That's 1 by 16. So 1 by 8. Uh, okay, 1 by 8, 1 by 8, 1 by 4. 1 by 4, 1 by 2, 1 by 2. And let's write it as 0. Okay. This sum up to 1. So 1 by 8, 1 by 8, 1 by 4, 1 by 4. Plus 4. Okay, so this sum up to 1. Now, if you have to find what is the probability that minimum of x y uh, equal to one, what will you do? Take value of x and y and checking. For example, zero and uh, one it be zero. That, uh, for example, x when x x taken zero and y taken one. So x, x, is, not is, zero. The, x is not taking the value zero here. You want yes, one, one. Saying, one, um, yes. one and one one. Yeah, you're saying minimum is one. So the possibility you will have is one with one. One, yes. One with two, one with where two. I'm writing two. the post as x and other as y. Then one possibility you can have is two one, one, two, one. Comma, yeah sorry two one two comma one yeah uh two comma that one means, yeah that's, that's it, it right so you will add just uh, one one so one by eight plus one two so one by four and two one so one by sixteen so this will give you the probability that minimum is one because the minimum here is one, right? You have to find the probability that minimum is one. Neither any one variable should be one. Okay. Yeah. And similarly, if you have to find what is the probability maximum. that maximum okay. of x y equal one, then what will you do? Zero one. One one zero one. One one. one, one yes. You will have just one one. one, one. one. 0, 1, and 0, 1, right? 1, there is no other. 1, 0 is also possible. Yeah, 1, 0 is also possible. Yes. Okay. So you have 1, 0, 0 1, 1. 1, 1. We don't have. Well, x, x can't take 0. X can't take 0. So 
zero one can be so possible. X X is okay. One comma X zero is fine. Zero. One comma zero is fine. One yes, comma one is yes, fine. fine. One comma yes. two is not possible. Two comma zero is not possible. Two comma one is not possible. Two comma two is not possible. One comma zero not possible. Zero comma one is not possible. It's, it's not, not there. there. Yes. Yeah. So you have only two cases. One one is one by eight. Yeah. So one one is one by eight. One comma zero is one by sixteen. Yes. Okay. So it's one by eight plus one by sixteen. Yeah. So basically, it's three by sixteen. Three by sixteen. Uh, ma'am, yeah. I just cross-checked that formula of two z minus one divided by n square, and it was actually for maximum, not for sum. So can you just look at the formula again? I. So you can just check the slides of the PPT. Okay. Wait. Yeah. Slide number seventy-three. Week two. Slide. Let's go back to slide. Which content? Speak to slide seventy three. Page number seventy three. Yes, ma'am, seventy three. Yeah. Yeah. You have uh, x y i a d uniform one to n. So it is defined as uh, max of x y. So how do you find probability z equal z? Okay. So the question is. Um, x y is uniform. In one to up to n, and Z is uh, maximum of x y. Maximum of x y. So what is the probability that Z equal Z? And this is given to be two Z minus one by n square. Two z minus one by n square. Or we can just check this formula with, uh, in the previous slide as well. Is it working for the question or not? I mean, just as an example. Yeah. Just give me a minute. We can take the example of a die where uh, we have six cases. Uh, so if we take uh, one to six, then uh, uh, n square will be thirty-six and two z minus one. That is. Suppose we take z equal to one, and two into one minus one, that is one by thirty-six. So that is the probability that uh, x y is equal to max of x y equal to one. We can take the example of a die in this. Case. Yeah, only one comma one is the only possible yes, case yes, where yes. one is x. So like that, we can oh, generalize yeah. for. Hmm. Like we can cross check in the previous slide as well. I mean, we just. Oh, uh, okay. In the previous slide, we have. Uh... Yeah, as we have find the. Okay, let's uh, let's try it here. So you have for uh, x y. You have x y. X is one, two, three, up to n. Y is again one. Ma'am, this formula will be work only for n mm -hmm. n cross n matrix. So both. If both are uh, both of x y x and y range same, that that time it will be work. Otherwise, I think. So what is okay? So what is the problem here? I'm not. I didn't understand. Here x and y takes same range. Ah no, that is yeah. Here it is the range is same. It is already given. But if range are different, so then denominator it, must. Be. Then this will not come, no. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that is. So okay, if it is x y, then the maximum of x one one is one here. So maximum of two one is going to be two. 
So, so if you we have the is, same formula for minimum as well i mean in the if the ranges are same for minimum you have to 2n uh, you have to subtract 2 uh, 2z minus 1 from 2n 2n minus 2z minus 1 that will give you the formula for minimum 2n will be exactly opposite it will be exactly opposite 1 will be 11 and 6 will be 1 so that will be 2n minus 2z minus 1 divided by n square yes divided by n square okay. yeah thank you i got it i mean this this formula is only for the only for the case where the ranges are same yeah this is only for the case where the ranges are same uniform 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 i mean the range is same and like it is uniformly distributed so that is how in the denominator you are getting like n square matrix also uh, size of n square Okay, then. You need to memorize this formula. Ah, uh, no, no, you don't have to. Okay, man. I think we need to memorize. Is it uniform or not? Is it square or not? Then, uh, then use this formula. Yeah, like you don't this, have. You don't have. You don't example. have to. You don't have to remember any new formula. Okay, yeah, man. Like in this example, this formula won't work. what about that binomial addition of two binomials n1p and n2p giving uh, n1 plus n2p can you show that also i mean if it is possible uh for now uh, can we finish this uh, cdf also okay okay already getting uh, whatever is left no we'll do it next uh, session if the session is 8 to 10 yes ma'am Yeah. Ma'am, uh, I have a doubt. Basically, there is a question that sum of two uniform is again a uniform or but only like that. Sum of two uniform need not be uniform. So basically, ma'am, the, the graph that during the example that professor shows, it shows a different structure. Basically, it gets a peak in its sum. So, it's I think it's binomial. Um. Okay, which example? Ma'am, in second last lecture. Sum of two uniform. Sum of two uniform need not be uniform. It has a peak. And you cannot you cannot say that it is binomial. Ma'am, there was an example. Okay. Yeah, there is an example, but uh, uh, why it is saying it is a normal dis? I mean, binomial distribution. in that example the graph so is the peak and which is similar to the binomial graph mm. i am little bit confused in that can you please uh, no no it's it need not be uh, a bi binomial distribution it need not be a binomial distribution ma'am can you please refer it in the same slide of the No, oh, I have seen that. Uh, just because uh, something has uh, a peak, a peak does need not be a binomial. No? So and in binomial, the peak can be towards the left side. It could be towards the right side. Here, the peak is exactly in between. In binomial, the peak could be towards the left side, depending on the value of p. The peak could be towards the left side, towards the right side. 
Okay, we have only we have only two topics left. We'll finish it off quickly. Ma'am, today or tomorrow, ma'am. Next, next session. Uh, next session. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Because ma uh, we are having class since you know six p.m. Six p.m. Okay. Can you uh, help me to understand hypergematic? Now? Uh, no. In other session. <laughs> Okay. Can we yes, just cover a single topic like uh, CDF of the maximum and minimum? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a similar topic uh, we can finish it off, but not not any new topic for now. We can just. Uh, already, already ten. Is already ten. That is right. So, do you want me to continue or do you want? It to be done in the next session. Oh, if they are short ones, I think it's better we finish this so that we can yeah, focus on the activity questions. Yeah, I'm, the yes, activity questions are left. The time for the next session is like the day after yesterday. Yeah, yeah so if you topic. can, if you can finish it, if it's not very big, then please finish it uh, today only. Yeah, man. CDF um, okay. next so and since the record, okay, recording is uh, not recording. I mean, streaming is already uh, there. You can, uh, if it's not clear for somebody right now, if it is uh, too much, you can always go back and watch on YouTube, okay? Let's take just 15 minutes and then finish it off. Yeah. Thank All you. right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you yeah. Thank you, well, uh, okay. I would request all of you to please keep yourself muted so that we can finish it off. So first we are dealing with just two random variables. So I will find CDF of max and CDF of min. Okay. So, and one condition that we are assuming is that X and Y are independent. So, this is happening only if X and Y are independent. All right. We looked at the PMF of max min. Now, what happens when we take find the CDF? So, let's say I am defining my Z1 to be max of x y and i am defining my z2 to be min of x y okay so what is capital f z1 of some small z1 you know the cdf we can write it as probability that z1 is less than small z1 okay and this what is z1 z1 is max of x y and this is less than z1 okay now if we are saying that maximum is less than z1 okay so z1 is a value right so z1 is a value and you are saying whatever value your xy takes this is less than this small z1 okay so if maximum is less if whatever x maximum of xy is if the maximum is less then definitely are both of these random variable individually is going to be less than z1 so i can say even x is less than z1 and y is less than z1 i right? think it's uh, less than or equal to no if i'm not wrong z1 is less ah, than sorry one. sorry yes yeah discrete right yeah this is less than or equal to okay so uh, if i am saying that maximum is less than or equal to z1 then definitely both x and y is going to be less than or equal to z1 Yes, ma'am. Right now. Yes. Yeah. So I would say x is less than or equal to z1, and even y is less than or equal to z1. And since I am saying they are independent, I can write this as probability x is less than or equal to z1 into probability x is less than or equal to z2. And this is nothing but fx of y z1 into fy of sorry, yeah, y. Y is less than z2. Z2, right? So this Z1. is the. Oh, Z1. sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, Z1. So this is the final answer that you get. So this was about maximum. Just as now, what happens what, in the minimum? Yeah. Just a small doubt. Like, what is the difference? What we have, what we are finding here, and what we are finding in the previous concept, like. Ah, here you are finding CDF. There you are finding uh, PMF, right? Like the exact probability. Here talking about less than equal to. 
now let's it find for yeah. Right? yeah. So here we will find the CDF of Z2 of some small Z2. And you know the CDF is defined as probability that capital Z2 is less than equal to small Z2, right? And what is Z2? Z2 I have defined it as minimum of XY that is less than equal to Z2. Okay. Now here, uh, all right. So Z2 is some fixed number. Okay. Now, if I'm saying that the minimum value is less than equal to Z2, can we say that X is less than equal to Z2 and Y is also less than equal to Z2? Can we say no, that? No, no. No, right? Is it understood for all that we cannot write this? Uh, no, ma'am. No. Yes. no? Okay. Not able to understand. So mm. we are saying uh, that uh we, we are saying that minimum is less than equal to z2 you have z2 right you have z2 here some number okay some number let's write it as two uh, and let's say uh we have a pair of values let's say one two uh two one 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 okay and or also right one three let's fix this z2 to be uh two uh, first okay remove this i am fixing my z2 to be two okay so i am saying my minimum is less than equal to this number two okay so it is possible that Let's say you have one three, you have one two, you have three two, you have uh, two two. Okay. If I'm saying my minimum is less than equal to two, and if I fixed minimum to be two, okay. If I'm saying, uh, if I'm fixing my Z2 to be 2, sorry, Z2 to be 2, okay. So, can I say, and let's say these are the values my XY was taking, okay. These are the values my XY was taking. So, can we say that, so from here, if Z2 was 2, can we say that minimum of XY, so if you look at first one, it is 1, 3, okay. What is the minimum? Minimum is one, one. Here. one here. So this will work. Okay. This will work. Now, second one, again, minimum is work. one, uh, one, two. This will also work. Now, no, ma'am. First will not work because one is less than two, but three is not less than two. But I'm talking about minimum here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now look at the third one. If minimum of x, y, right? So here the minimum is three four. Three. So yeah. minimum is coming out to be three. Okay. But three is not less than Z2. Yes. So basically what I'm trying to say is like if if you have uh, you cannot say that if the minimum is less, your both of these random variables should be less than this. I mean, it is possible. That it is possible that one of it is here, or one of it is here. I'm saying. I'm you saying per pair. Per pair, like okay. uh, if if you are writing one three, minimum is one three. Okay. Minimum one. is min, uh, minimum of one three is one. Let x was one here, and y was three here. So in this case, x is less than one. Is y less than three or y less than one? No, no, right? X is y less is... than two, but y is not less than two. Yeah, I'm sorry, two. This should be two. Right? Ah, sorry, x is less than two and y is less than two. That is not happening here. Here x is one, but y is three. So just because minimum is coming to be so, if you look at one three, the minimum is coming out to be one. But in general, it's we cannot say that. 
both x and y are going to be less than z2 right yes so that is why we cannot write this as we cannot write it as write this as that x is less than equal to z2 and y is less than equal to z2 okay okay so what we will do is we will write one minus this will write as one minus probability that minimum of x y greater is greater than, than equal to z2 greater than z2 ma'am ah greater sorry but, uh, we are talking about discrete here right greater than z2 now uh, as, okay so minimum of x y we cannot write it as less than equal to z2 but if but if the minimum is greater than z2 if the minimum is greater than some number then all of the numbers should be greater than uh, z2 right both x and y should be greater than z2 yes ma'am right now yeah so from here we can write that x is greater than z2 and y is greater than z2 fine it's okay yes ma'am yeah so this can be written as 1 minus probability that x is greater than z2 times probability y is greater than z2 and this can be written as 1 minus Uh, minus one minus one minus uh, f x less of, than equal to z f x of z two and one minus f y of z two z two okay now this is what you got you have solved the graded assignment question number one ha huh. okay <laughs> I, i didn't know that So uh, this is a problem there. Yes, I'm first first question itself. No, it's all. This is like a property for the uh, max and min. Okay, as uh, as everyone is leaving right now, but uh, yeah, so we'll stop. We'll about. stop here now because uh, we have already seen max and min. Yeah. Um, and can we discuss the same topic uh, in the next session again? Just as much. Yeah. So just I will not be in the next session, but. Yeah, I will tell the person to uh, uh, discuss it further. Okay, so, you. is this uh, are the two topics that you were uh, speaking of done today? Yeah, it is done for two random variable, but we have not extended it to uh, multiple random variable. All of these would be then extended to uh, more than so two. So, both uh, max and min will be extended to n random variable. That is the only part that is left. But this minimum one is I feel complicated. I mean, more complicated. Yeah, minimum is a little tricky, but it's uh, not so difficult. Like once you understand it for two random variable, it goes for n random variable. There is no difference. I'm at this uh, binomials uh, regarding that binomial when n one p and n two p that will be that you told it is on the discourse. Yeah, it is on discourse. I mean, older posts, older posts. Older post, yeah. Okay, okay. We can access the older post of last. You time. you can access the older post. Okay. okay. So uh, these identities, like uh, to sum of two binomials, sum of two Poisons, and all that, all these identities, uh, can we get a can we get a place where we can we know all these identities? Uh, where we can uh, sort of uh, mug up all these identities. Uh, all these identities, uh, uh, it is already there in the lecture. No, but some of the identities uh, we uh, we are asked to derive by uh, sir. Uh, oh, okay. But, like for the example, this binomial one, n one p and n two p. Oh, you mean even the proof? Huh? No, even if we don't get the proof. Uh, Are these identities given? Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, it is on discourse. Just check it once. Uh, uh, if not, we'll provide it to you. Okay. 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 You can you can write it to me on discourse. Last okay. time also I had asked somebody to ask the question on discourse, but I didn't get. Like if you don't find it there, uh, just uh, tag me and you can ask your question. Okay. Okay. So we get at one place all the identities required to solve the questions. If we get that, ma'am, ma'am, can you please share your handle? Ah, uh, share my what? Handle for discourse. Oh, Which handle one? for discourse. Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, you have not seen the discourse. 
I have seen the discourse, but I do not know your handle. If I am supposed to ask some question and tag you specifically, you can uh, you can uh, tag at the rate Nikita. It should come core supporting. Uh, okay, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, could you please tell which all geometric uh, series we should know for this course? Are there uh, many? Just no, no. I mean, you should just know uh, like what is the sum of infinite uh, geometric series and what is the sum of uh, and sum of geometric series with n terms. That's that's all. Okay, ma'am. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Well, we'll close the session now. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Ma ma I want to ask about the extra activity third, which is coming. Okay. Uh, I saw the lecture about Google.